1997 uh, AB number two. All right, so man, I wish uh, FRQ questions were this simple nowadays. Um, okay, so we got uh, a function right here. It's three cosine x. It's shown above. Yay. Uh, oh, look, it's already labeled for me. That's one thing that I always make sure I do when I get to our calculus problems. If they give me a graph, I make sure I label it f, f prime, or f double prime because I don't want to make those simple mistakes. Um, so it crosses the y-axis at point P, which I can see right there, and the x-axis at point Q, which I can see right there. Write an equation for a line passing through points P and Q. What? Write an equation for the line? Oh my gosh, this is not even calculus right here. So there's a line right here passing through the points P and Q. We gotta write an equation. So that means you got to find the slope and we need one of those points to write the equation on the line. So the, here is, um, <clears throat> here's A. So um, what do we got? The Y values, I'm gonna go um, zero minus three, subtract that on top. Then the X values, we got pi over two uh, minus the zero. Uh, make sure you stay consistent. Um, so zero and pi over two should be from the same point and three over zero should be from the same point. It doesn't matter if the three and zero are first or if they're second, you'll get the same result. So on top I get negative three and the bottom I get pi over two. We don't wanna have a fraction inside of a fraction so I'm gonna go negative six over, um, or that'd be pi. And how do we do that? Well, one way you can do that is you can multiply the top and bottom by two, and you can get it that way, or you can think negative three times the reciprocal of pi over two, which would be uh, two over pi, and that's how we would get that. So that is my slope, that's my slope, and then I'm gonna pull out my, my um, point slope form from algebra, that is y minus y1 uh, equals m times x minus x1, which is actually very similar, <coughs> actually the exact same thing as our calculus one for a tangent line looks like so <coughs> and I'm gonna plug in my slope which is negative 6 over pi and then I plug in one of the x values I'm gonna pick this one because he looks prettier 0 and 3 <coughs> so I'm plugging 0 right there equals y minus 3 uh, I would have to distribute this, but when I multiply it to zero, it doesn't matter. So I have now y minus three equals negative six um, over pi x, and I'm gonna add three and get rid of that. Uh, there you have it, there's our linear equation. And actually, I, I went pretty far here. I could have probably left it right here, just like this, um, because it is an equation of a line. Um, if you're doing multiple choice and it asks you that, then you're gonna wanna get y alone like I did. Uh, earlier when I had y equals uh, negative 6 over pi x <clears throat> plus 3. Now I chose, I chose this point to plug in, but it doesn't matter. You can choose this point also. You'll get the same result. I know. It's crazy. All right, next, <clears throat> B. Write an equation for a line tangent to the graph of f at point q. Show the analysis that leads to your conclusion. All right, so that just means, you know, I got to show all my work. So let's show all my work <clears throat> and make sure it's clear. So, uh, back to what we had before, uh, y minus f of a uh, equals um, f prime of a. I'm just writing this out to, so I show my work for myself. I don't like making mistakes on an exam. <clears throat> All right, a is going to be equaling, that's your x value at the point. And so right now it's going to equal pi over 2. So I'm plugging in pi over 2 in for all those a's. <clears throat> Uh, this one we already know the value, so it's just going to be y minus 0. And we know the value because it gives us to us right there. Uh, and then we have equals f prime of a. So let's find our f prime. What is f prime? So f prime of x, I'm going to have to take this guy and take the derivative of him. Uh, 3 is just a scalar, so you can ignore him. What is the derivative of cosine? And then there is nothing inside of cosine. There's no function inside of cosine, just the x. So you don't have to do the chain rule. So um, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we're going to get negative sine, or negative 3 sine x. There's our derivative. And now I'm going to plug in my a, so I get f prime of uh, pi over 2, uh, which is negative 3 sine of pi over 2. And if you've been, if you're kind of weak sauce on your trig, <clears throat> think, about, think about the unit circle right here. Um, this is pi. And so if I went um, halfway around the circle, that's pi. But we just want to go uh, to pi over 2. That's half of that. So this is pi over 2. My coordinates right there are 0 and 1. Um, the sine value is the y, and the cosine value is the x. And so our sine value is 1, 
which means we would make this into a 1. Multiplying times negative 3 would just be negative 3. So that is our slope. We have negative 3, and then we have x minus pi over 2. Um, technically, we can be done right here. We don't even have to distribute. We can just leave our answer like this because that is an equation of a tangent line. If you were uh, doing this in multiple choice, uh, this type of problem, then you would want to distribute this 3 because uh, most likely they would um, simplify as much as you can and have it equal to y. So there's our tangent line. All right, uh, last one that you guys had to do, my students, um, because this is still first semester, you guys haven't done enough uh, calculus to be able to do D. Uh, this says, find the x-coordinate of the point on the graph of f between points p and q. Okay, so uh, on our x-axis, we're looking at this area, this interval between um, right there and right there, because that's where p is and that's where q is. So what's the x value that's between those two points, uh, which the tangent line to the graph of f is parallel to pq? So I drew the line pq. <coughs> We need to find a point here that is parallel to it, um, that has a tangent line that's parallel to it. It looks kind of like, like it'd be right, right here. I, I could be wrong, though. Maybe it's a little higher. I don't know. Okay, but uh, so how would we exactly find that? I mean, we've got to find a, a precision, like a, an exact point. This is the mean value theorem, by the way. Uh, we are using the mean value theorem to find this. And so what you would do here is you would find the slope between these two points, which we already did earlier. We got negative 6 over pi. <coughs> And then you would take that slope, negative 6 over pi, and you would set it equal to f prime. And we already found f prime. f prime was negative 3 uh, sine x. And then we would solve. So let's get the sine function alone first by dividing both sides by negative 3. Or you can think multiply both sides by negative 1 third, which I will do. And the, the 3 cancels out the 6, it becomes a 2, and the negatives cancel out. So we're just left with 2 over pi equals sine of x. And then to get x alone, we're going to do uh, sine inverse of both sides. So I'm just going to write sine. Actually, let's, do, let's write arc. So I don't have to have a negative right there. So arc sine of uh, 2 divided by pi. And then I have x all by himself. And that would be my x. So I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to do anything else with it. And we're actually safe because we're, we're allowed to plug in uh, two, 2 divided by pi into arc sine. Um, and that's it. That's how we find the x coordinate uh, for the point uh, of f. Now, if you're watching this video and you're not in my class, then you're curious about how to do the last problem. To finish off this problem in D, it says let R be the region bounded by the first quadrant uh, by the graph of F. That gives us our boundaries. We have um, x equals 0 and then x uh, equals pi over 2. And so uh, we would write um, the integral from <clears throat> 0 to pi over 2. And then it says, um, oh, and the line segment. Oh, wait, hold on a second. The area is also bind, bounded by the line segment that we found earlier. So um, I'm going to shade that in. That's the, that's the area that we are rotating around the x-axis. So if we were to rotate this around the x-axis, the, the radius that we need, the, the, the radius of the outer function uh, has to be subtracted by the radius of the inner function. So we're going to need that line function uh, from earlier. So we're going we're gonna to say negative 3. Uh, I'm sorry, not negative, uh, just 3 cosine x, and we're going to subtract from that. Oh, where's my 3? Subtract from the outer function, the inner function, and I'm just going to write line right here because I don't want to go back and find that line, but it just says setup, so we don't have to worry about it. So we have um, this minus this, that'll give us the, the r, the radius of the disk that we are forming when we rotate uh, this around um, the x-axis and uh, when you find the area of a circle it's pi r squared so we got to go take the radius and we got to square it and we have to multiply it by pi and don't forget your dx the dx is very important a lot of times you will uh, miss out on a point if you don't write the dx this will represent the area or the the volume the volume of the solid generated by revolving that region that we shaded in right here around the x-axis and there it is don't evaluate so that's it that's your answer They'll give you points probably for 
um, the, the boundaries, um, and then setting up everything, like having the pi, having the squared, and having the dx.